Welcome to episode 58 of Cocktail Hour. I'm Andy. And I'm Rev. And we are very happy to be here. And it's going to be a squee episode. Very excited. I know, right? Well, we're going to do a little preamble later. I know it's not pre, we should do it later. But because. Postamble. Yeah, postamble. There you go. There you go. Our author guest is George Beers. And Georgia is going to help us select a winner of two two winners, two, count them, two, uno, dos. Okay. And Rev, take it away. Okay. Well, this, uh, these winners will, uh, are from the episode 57, the Highway Woman uh, uh, episode, and we're giving away a little bit of Cocktail Hour swag. So we're going to pick a winner of a Cocktail Hour magnet. And a keychain. So, um, Georgia, I need you to pick one number between one and six. This will be for the magnet. Two. Number two. Yes. Oh, God, now I want to rearrange all the all the entrants. What? <laughs> all right, who won? Who is the number two? Fucking Elena. What's wrong with Elena? Oh, because she wins every this damn is time. The third thing she's won. <laughs> <laughs> Of our listeners, too, so it works out. That's awesome. Okay, well, now let me let me remove Elena from the from the mix here. All right. Yes, I have a spreadsheet. Of course you okay. do. Okay, and then, um, okay, now would you please pick a number between one and five? Five. Oh, cool. Jaylee Tuma, who has never won anything. Oh, excellent. Now she has a keychain. Fabulous. And she's she's super sweet. She's always sharing our links and stuff around. Yep, she's so, awesome. Heck, yay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, congratulations, winners. This will be the last of the cocktail hour swag that we'll be giving away for a while yeah. since we've got um, pretty solid, uh, we're pretty solidly booked with author guests, and you know I love twisting arms and getting stuff from the guests, <laughs> so, as Georgia can attest. Yep. <laughs> yep. Don't tell our secrets, Georgia. Come on in. No, Actually, my lips sealed. All right, excellent. Georgia was Georgia is has been by far the most generous of any author guest that we've had on, and there was virtually no arm twisting at all. Virtually no arm twisting. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a little last minute I twisting. Put a little burns here on my arms from twisting. <laughs> better than better on your I'm arms. Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What? <laughs> better on your arms and your knees? Is that what I just heard? <laughs> oh my. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know where to go after that. I, I, I got nothing now. Uh, you got, I got nothing. nothing. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about speaking of nothing. Let's <laughs> let's just go. Let's go to something, shall we? Um, how about talking about the alcoholic libations we're all enjoying this evening? It's a little bit of a uh, little bit of shaking up the mix. I think the author guest is doing something different than we are. So yeah, George, you guys wussed out on me. I know, Georgia. What are you drinking? I am drinking what is called a skinny pirate. Mm. Which is Captain Morgan spiced rum, a little Diet Coke, and a sliver of lime. Get the hell out, really? Yeah, it's my drink of choice, thank you. Oh, wow. Have you uh, perhaps tried a drink that is a cola and is diet but is not based in chemicals? I have not. Oh. Well, if you have a Whole Foods near you, you might want to try some Zivia. Hmm. They have cola that's sweetened from, you know, the stevia plant. Uh-huh, yeah. It's not bad. I'll have to give that a shot. Give it a shot. See what you see what you think. And then feel free to, you know, send me an email and say, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. What the hell? Um, Reb, what you drinking? I am having um, the other suggestion that Georgia had because I'm not a fan of, of the captain. <clears throat> but to make it up to you, Georgia, I am wearing a pirate shirt. Well, all right then. Okay. I forget. Thank you. It, it was weighing on my it was weighing on my mind pretty heavy. Um, I'm having a, a dirty martini, which I hadn't had before, um, and I'm having a gin dirty martini. And we did make a video, so we'll have that posted. Um, and I, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty tasty. I'm gonna have some right now. I Andy, do. What are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking a regular vodka martini, but my brother. 
uh, Marcello, who I've talked about on Facebook, who is the resident chef around here, um, he apparently likes to dip into my bar stash, and he consumed the queen olives. They're gone. And so I went to go make myself a nice vodka dry martini, and guess what? There are no queen olives in the refrigerator. So yeah, this I was, is not the first time that he's messed up our, our uh, cocktails on it, the show. That's very true. That's very true. And, and even my holiday party I have for employees at work, um, I, would, I was talking all week about the, the joys of sex with Jennifer. Mm. And yes, I had several people that go, oh, we cannot wait to have some of that drink. So I go to the bar. I pick up this gigantor bottle of Grey Goose, right, to start, to start the drinks. And it had maybe a tablespoon at the bottom. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> well, anyway, so back to the present. Um, my... Martini now has Kalamata olives instead of Queen <laughs> olives because you know I have to have olives with my martini, damn it. Well, that, you do, but Kalamatas, huh? Interesting. It's not bad. I mean, it's not my it's choice. Kind of a freak martini. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm waving <laughs> my freak flag. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or my All freak right, martini. Yay for my, booze. Way for booze. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there you go. So all of us are going to be inebriated by the end of the show. Yay. Uh-huh. Yay. Mm-hmm. Happy and not stupid. Well, Next. it doesn't matter, really. So <laughs> back to back to Georgia, an award-winning author, I might say. Um, her website, for those of you listening, and if you don't know, because, you know, you probably have stalkers, Georgia. So for those <laughs> not stalker-ish, it's www.georgiabeers, and that's B-E-E-R-S dot com. And she's got everything over there. And she has a little about me section. And it's all about her, quite frankly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it should be, right? Yes, it should be. That's what I was thinking. Yep. And it's really kind of cool. I mean, go over there and read it. It's awesome. And I found out she's half Italian, so that makes her a paisan because I'm probably half Italian, maybe quarter. But uh-huh. we are paisans together, and that just makes me yep. bond a little bit more. So I'll be a stalker, Georgia. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, give it a give it a give it a look. Check it out, and you know, shit, buy some books while you're there. Speaking of oh, buying books, hmm. how, how about how about you know free audio books? Ooh, free audio books are fantastic. You gotta love free audio books. I mean, who in the world does not like free audio books? Am I right? <laughs> I love audiobooks, and I love free audiobooks. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. So here's the pitch, gang. You're all used to it, so get your asses over to the computer. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash cocktail hour. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Nobody's left out. Get over no. there and sign up. Do it. It's free. Get your free audio book and then quit if you don't want to. That's right. And the the uh, any proceeds we get from you signing up goes toward Cocktail Hour, running the show, and swag products that we offer as you know presents or you know little surprise gifts for our listeners. So you're supporting the show. It's coming back to you. Let's do it. Come on, get on it. There, absolutely. And you know. There is a, an audiobook that I know we've mentioned before, but I feel it's appropriate to bring it up again. And I listened to the sample um, today, and um, the narrator has a super sweet, hot voice. Um, no, it is not starting from scratch because that hasn't made it to, <laughs> to Audible yet. So, see, I'm not hitting on Georgia just yet. I haven't had enough <laughs> martini. Um, but it is too close to touch, mm. and the uh, the narrator is a woman named Abby Creighton, and holy shit, she's got a great voice. Really? Yes. Awesome. That is so of- cool to know. I haven't had a chance to go over and take a listen to it yet. I have all of my um, connections and links to do that, and I just haven't had a chance, and I'm so happy to hear that. Mm. <laughs> yes, she has a nice voice, so nice, in fact, that I went to look uh, at all of the... Uh, books that she's uh, that she's narrated, and she has a lot, but um, none of them none of them looked like I really wanted to to you know listen to them. But <laughs> but um, but yeah, so go get too close to touch. 
Um, and then if uh, and then starting from scratch will be over at Audible at some point. Um, yep. So if you want to get too close to touch it, and then if you uh, or if you already have that one and you want to get something else, just do a search on dog ear. So you're supporting, you know, what, somebody in our community, and I'm sure that Karen Wolfer and and the uh, and the authors would really appreciate your support as well. So absolutely. Get your asses over there yep. at audibletrial.com slash cocktail hour. And, and I have a small confession to make. <clears throat> the larger Uh-oh. confession will come later. But the small confession I have to make is I really, when I signed up for Audible, I thought it was only going to be during the trial period and I was just going to, you know, like cancel it. Mm-hmm. But I found that it's, I mean, even, I mean, I, I don't think the cost of it per month that they pop me for is is cost prohibitive i mean it's it's you know really a nominal charge but i find that i actually look forward to those little credits i wait a couple of months until they gather up and then i start shopping it's so much fun to try and find something and it's kind of like i do this little game where i look at my public library and see what's available so i can listen to it in the car and i don't have to buy it versus you know something i really want to hear but it's not at the library i can go get it audible so it's it's really a lot of fun and i really honestly and sincerely urge everyone to go over there and and sign up yeah do you remember i think on the last episode i had mentioned that i was listening to war by sebastian younger yeah i i uh, i actually returned that book because the narration sucked because he did it himself and you know there are just unlike georgia there are some authors that should not read their own work (laughs) Um, and he was one of them and and i i went and i just returned it It, they one of the options was i didn't like the narrator there's no issues within um within a day i had my money back because i had actually paid for that one um but yeah you got nothing to lose so we'll we'll stop bitching at you now yeah right exactly go get your damn book I haven't. I have not uh, purchased uh, with my credits any any George Beers books yet. But my question is, Georgia, if you're reading one of your books, is that what I understand? On Audible, yeah. you have a book out there that you've read. Um, I did start it from scratch. I never just started from scratch. Yeah. Really? So is yeah. there? I mean, is is there a sex scene in there? There's more than one. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, a couple of them. Yes. Really? So you are reading a sex scene? Yes. Oh, oh yes. how is that? Yes. It was. I sweat through three shirts. <laughs> Did you not? I was so nervous. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, Karen Karen came on and did a bar rag with me. I'm sorry if you can hear my dogs wrestling behind me. Um, and she had mentioned that uh, that you were a little embarrassed while you were reading your sex scene. I was. I had to put a paper over the little window in the sound booth so nobody could see. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yay. I, I can't wait till it comes out on Audible. That, the funny yeah. part is when I was writing the next book, I was thinking in my head that if I was going to want to do that again, like I was writing the love scene, you know, and I was thinking, okay, can I read this out loud? Would I be able to read this out? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should change the word. <laughs> Stop thinking about that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's too damn funny. Well, <clears throat> we um, uh, Rev sent out the clarion call to our listeners. Like, we are so pumped up. George is coming on the show. You know, y'all bitches, you need to come and call, call us on our cocktail hour, <laughs> not cocktail hour number. Give us some feedback. Come on, this is your show. You know, g- sound off. And we actually had some fabulous listeners sound off. Excellent. Some people, I, I said that um, if nobody called in, because I hate to fail when I come up with these ideas, <laughs> I, I said if nobody called in that you would pick on me, Andy. So I think people called in, you know, so that you wouldn't pick on me, <laughs> even though you really don't. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> if, yep. There's no picking on anybody. Thank you. Oh. So how about we pop off with a phone call? We can... no, we've never done this before, so I'm pretty excited to see how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah, this is new. All right, so who should we hear from? Uh, magic Fingers, let's pick Georgia Love. Ready? Georgia Beers is the absolute best author ever. Why well, you ask? Because she just is. No, I've read every single one of her books, and I just finished Justice, which was fabulous. And I've met her, so therefore I know that she's super cool. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. And I love her. There you go. 
All right, so Georgia, what did you think about that? That was so flattering. Wasn't that awesome? I, I get all, like, blushy and stuff when people talk <laughs> like that. <laughs> that was really sweet. I yeah, love that. That was sweet. <sighs> all right, how about Kitty McSaucerton? Let me, let me give a little prefix on Kitty so okay. that everybody knows who Kitty is. All right, okay? lay on. So Kitty is a member of the, of the forum, and she is uh, she reads a lot of erotica, and it's it's actually you know her name isn't Kitty. We named her Kitty McSaucer too because we thought that that was awesome and it would be an awesome name for like an erotica uh, a great reviewer, name. right? So um, so Kitty decided she was going to call in. All right, sweet. Here we go. Kitty McSaucer Ten wants to tell you that she read the new two piece from All the Wild and she approved. All right, so what's your feedback on that one? Um, I'm actually really flattered to hear that one because she's talking about a an erotica that is in a short story trilogy that I just put up on Amazon not too long ago. So not too many people have read that one. Mm. So I'm really happy to hear that she liked it. It's uh, it's kind of racy. <laughs> yeah, and I want to I, when we start actually talking because I know we want to get through these uh, these recordings. But I I have some questions that I that I want to uh, ask you specifically about that story. Okay. So, yeah. Well, note <laughs> noted on the list. Okay. I next up, it. next up is Pat. Hey, Rev. This is Pat from Philly. I was wondering which Georgia prefers to work on: A compilation of short stories or a novel, and when when does she think her next book will be out? Thank you. What you got, Georgia? I say that I thought writing a short story collection would be nice and easy, and it was a giant pain in the ass. <laughs> so I would rather write a novel. <laughs> well, as, as somebody who um, who's not real big on short stories, mm-hmm. I would rather you write novels too. And when can we expect another one? The next, The one that I'm working on currently is supposed to be published um, May of 2014, which is a long oh, way. May I know, of 2014? No, so I'm hoping to squeeze something in before that. That's and my it, I don't know that that will work, but right now that's, that's what I'm hoping to do. All right. And, and will you be, um, do you know, are you going to be um, putting that one out with Brisk? Um, the one that's due in May of 2014 will be with Bywater, but I might do something with Brisk beforehand. Okay. Well, you just like to spread yourself around, huh? I do. I do. Good huh. for you. I thought that was only me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Nancy Jean's up next. Hello, this is Nancy Jean out in California, and I'm calling to see when you will be writing uh, more characters like Gretchen from Too Close to touch more uh, tightly round control freak businesswoman who just needs to lose a little bit of control now and then. I'd love to hear what kind of um, characters you have in mind for future books. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, and Mastermind says hi. <laughs> um, I loved hearing that because Gretchen from Too Close to Touch, um, first of all, Too Close to Touch is my bestseller still. Um, I get my reports every quarter, and that one always far outsells everything else, which is is so interesting to me. Yeah, me too. That is the first book that I ever wrote that when I was finished with final edits, I literally missed my characters. I was, like, in a mild depression for a couple weeks because they were gone. Wow. Uh, So I love that people love Gretchen because she was kind of, um, I don't know, she was kind of hard. And I have to be, I know this woman asked if I was going to write another character like her, and I would love to. You kind of have to be careful when you're writing romance that you don't write the same character over and over and over again. Yeah, we see that. Yeah, and frankly, it's kind of easy to write one of them as the businesswoman who's cold and a control freak. I mean, that's kind of common. So I think, A, you have to give her a little more than that, but B, you also can't have her in every single book. Um... What I might do, though, at some point is write maybe a little bit of a short story with Gretchen and Kylie in it, just almost like a follow-up, um, because I do get people asking about them a lot, and I still kind of miss them. So I might toy with that idea a little bit. Well, maybe you could do, I mean, then there are other authors that, that have done this, too, but um, like, uh, Karen Callmaker comes yeah. to mind right away. Yeah. You know where I'm going yeah. with this, right? Yeah. Um, 
just like a, a, a short novel or a uh-huh. novella with little uh-huh. follow-ups for, for each one. Yep. I have so there you go. There's your, there's your project for in between. Um, there you go. See, Thanks. there you go. We're problem solvers here. That's right. <laughs> and we create problems too, but th- we don't talk about that. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Uh, let's see who's next. Megan. Hey, Georgia. This is uh, Megan from Canada. And just before I head out and about, I um, just wanted to say uh, I've read and enjoyed uh, um, all your books. And uh, I'm very eager to do an interview on the Cockpit Hour. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Aww. Megan. That was nice. Megan's very nice. She's Canadian. It's, yeah, it's a prerequisite. I love Canada. <laughs> I'm almost she, really. She did have to go oot in a boot. Oot in a boot. Oot in a boot. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, next up is Nikki. I think we saved Nikki for last. Hello, Rev and Andy. Nikki Smalls here. I have a question for Georgia Beers. Um, I've always enjoyed your work. Um, I think I've read just about every single one of your books at least once, more so twice or three times. Um, but I really noticed that in the last few books, your writing has matured, and I love it even more. So I was wondering if there was someone or something that lit a fire under your ass in the last few years. If so, I applaud it and uh, keep it coming. In regards to who I would fuck, I would have to say Avery King for the hair alone. But I would not kick Elena out of bed for eating crackers, honestly, because starting from scratch is my favorite. Okay, thank you. Bye. I <laughs> <laughs> love that. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that anything lit a fire under my ass, as she so delicately put it. I think but... he's very tactful. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> but I think there came a point where, and I think this happens to most of us, that decide they're going to take this route as a career. I think there comes a point when it goes from being something fun and kind of on the side to this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And then you sit down and you focus a little harder and you pay a little more attention to the editor and you give it your best. Even though you thought you were giving your best, there's more to give. Hmm. Um, So I think maybe that's just what happened. I mean, I want to write the best books that I possibly can because I want to keep getting letters and phone calls like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And and um, like I've I've read I've read all of your books, um, uh-huh. and uh, I finished up just the, I think I've read six of your books last week, just this last week. <laughs> um, now, granted, a few of them were short, but you know, uh-huh. still. So, uh-huh. I, I and I, I agree with Nikki. I can definitely. It's not so much that I see a big difference, but I like the stories more. Mm. Um, like I've read, like I think of of all of your books. And Andy, you may not be ready to start talking about this, but you know, I'm just ready to launch. Is that okay? Yeah. What? Go ahead. All right. All right. So, of of all of your books, there was only one that I that I didn't really like very much, okay. um, and. It was fresh tracks, uh, and and I think I think what it, I think what it was for me in that one is there were just so many people uh-huh. that I didn't. And it was, it's been a while since I've read it, so I'm just trying to remember. I think it was that I, I just wasn't able to connect with any of them okay. on a on a deep level like I could with um, with some of your other works. Um, but but the stories I, I, I like starting from scratch was it was the starting from scratch was the first one of your books that I read and it's still my favorite. I thought ninety six hours was going to take it, mm-hmm. um, but then I went back and reread starting from scratch and, and it's still my favorite. It's my favorite too. <laughs> is it excellent? <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I did. I do have a couple of questions from folks who didn't call in. Two were, were a little too nervous, and Elena, she's in Germany. She tried to call in. She was going to be our first one, uh, but she couldn't get the number to work. So, okay. um, Andy, I'm just going to I'm just going to do these questions. Is that okay with you? Sure, go ahead. Excellent. So Elena wanted to know uh, when you'll publish the cookbook with all the recipes from starting from scratch. <laughs> um, you know, I had a couple people ask me about that. I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, a, there's not really all that many in there, and the stuff that's in there is quite basic, actually. Um, 
But you never know. Maybe I'll put them on my website. It's not a there bad idea. It's not yeah. a bad idea now that I think about it. I'll See? Have to, man. <laughs> uh, and then um, a question from Jenny, and she says, um, she has a question for you about the books, uh, A Puppy Dog Tale and Mine. Um, she says, I wanted to know if they're connected to each other, even though they were written many years apart. I read A Puppy Dog Tale first and then read Mine. And after I read a little bit of Mine, it made me think of the other book. They are not connected at all, actually. All right. um, I, I did. I wrote them very far apart and in two completely different places, and they just happened to both center around dogs but no they're not connected at all and um i like the puppy dog tale thank you i wrote it a long long time ago and i reworked it and updated it it's i've got a lot of stuff that you know you go through and you're like oh yeah i remember this i could i could i could update this excellent yeah i like that um and a puppy dog tale that's from uh call of the wild right yes right um and then i have one more and uh this one um is uh, our friend Sunny, her, she calls her her GGF, her gourmet girlfriend, because um, she cooks. She cooks. <laughs> um, and she was too bashful to call in. So she says so she wants to know where you get your inspiration for your books. Um, they're all so different, and her characters are so likable and interesting. Uh, she's curious as to how she comes up with them. That is a good question. I get that a lot about where do you get your inspiration from. Um, and I think my ideas for plots come from my girlfriend a lot. Um, she's a great idea girl. She doesn't write, but she's like, let's throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. And she, she will bombard me with ideas. And most of the time I'm like, uh, yeah, no, 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 maybe, maybe that, no, no. Um, so, <laughs> so a lot of the general plot lines start with her. Hmm. As far as... The characters themselves, I usually come up with a little bit of what kind of personality this woman's going to have and and what she looks like. She's All of my characters are somebody I have seen before, whether they are a celebrity or somebody I know or somebody in a magazine in the Eddie Bauer catalog. Um, I've seen them all because I need that in order to have them stay solid in my head when I'm writing. Hmm. Um, that- that brings up something that I noticed, and, and I was talking to Megan this morning about it, and, and she said that this is one of the, the pitfalls of uh, reading one author's, you know, so many of one author's works back to back to back, as you <laughs> notice patterns and things mm-hmm. like that, right? Or <laughs> you, I noticed two things about your, your stuff, Georgia. Uh-huh. First, I think you're a big ass woman. <laughs> but a woman who appreciates a nice Are you saying ass. I have a big ass, Rev? No, no, no. Big? I've seen your ass. It's it's quite fine. It's quite fine. <laughs> Dang, girl. No, but but a lot of your um, a lot of the uh, you, you you spend time, and I think in every story that I've read uh, this last week, um, there's a mention of of their the somebody's ass and how nice it looks. Interesting. <laughs> the other thing is that you always have at least one character who you who who you describe as having a sprinkling of freckles. Really? I just yes. that. I just <laughs> write that down right now if that doesn't happen anymore. Actually, now that you said it, I I did notice that a couple of times in Slices of Life. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 in every in every book that I read this week. Hmm. Because after after the first couple of times I'm like I know it's going to come up. I know it is. And I'm like, yes, there it is. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> now I, see, now I'm on a mission. Now i got to fix that. Mm. There you go. Are you going to Are you gonna go do a search and see how many times it comes up? No, because that will just depress me because I can't fix it now. It's <laughs> 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 you know, a little post-it note right on my monitor that says, no freckles. <laughs> no, no. So we were, well, and I had told Megan that, you know, those were the two things that I noticed. And she she had asked if I had come across anybody who had a nice a sprinkling of freckles on their ass. <laughs> oh, Megan would. <laughs> oh, damn, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, maybe I'll right, well, it there just for you, Rev, and see if you pick it out. That'd be awesome. I will. <laughs> she will, too. I'm a detailed person. She is. Yeah, she is. 
<laughs> All right. So shall we get to the actual book review? What do you think? <laughs> this is fun. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Andy, you're usually the one that rolls with the punches and I, I have to be very rigid. It's true, but still. All right. But I would like to contribute because this is where my big secret comes out so everybody knows, including Georgia. Uh, all right. Should I brace myself? Brace yourself, sister. Here we go. Let me, let me put right. my drink down. Put your drink down, Dan. I don't want you choking. No spilling. Uh, no spilling, yeah. That's alcohol abuse. Okay, so here we go. In prep for this show, we read Slices of Life. That's the book we're reviewing. It's actually a novella. But here's the big confession. This is the first written work of George Beers I have ever read. Oh, really? I already knew that. But Georgia didn't. I did not know that. This first Don't time. Georgia. <laughs> for, I, just, I had you on my list to read, Georgia. I just hadn't gotten to you yet. Is that supposed to make me feel better, Andy? Yeah, I know, a little that bit. Makes yeah. It makes it worse. It makes it worse. Damn it! Damn it! Hang it out on the list, really? Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, you, that's your. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know what? I got no shame in my game. I got to be honest. That's how it how it rolled. Oh, you know what? I'll forgive you. I'll oh. let it slide this time. All right, thank you. I but think, but you, know, you you need to be uh, you need to buy Georgia a drink in, in Dallas then I I suggest uh, sex with Jenna uh, you know you took the words right out of my mouth so Georgia tell me what that is made out of What's oh girl sex with, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> sex with Jennifer has vodka uh, coconut rum uh, grenadine pineapple triple juice sec. and triple sec and it's fabulous. Wow. I would like that. Oh, you it's, would. All right, so that's your payment then. In Dallas, yeah. you need to buy me one of those. I will certainly do that. I'll even buy you two. All righty. I'll even buy your girlfriend two. Awesome. <laughs> she likes and, then, and, then, and then we can sit down at the table and write a scene where you talk about the sprinkling of freckles on someone's <laughs> ass. On a cocktail napkin. A cocktail napkin. Awesome. Listen. All right, listen, J.K. <laughs> Rowling. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about Slices of Life. That's the uh, novella uh, that we're going to discuss. And this is a new book, right? Yes. Brand new. Yes. People can buy it now, though, right? Yes, they can. Awesome, because we got free copies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I, know. I have to confess, I, I bought it. Did you? I bought it before, well, I bought it before, um, before we uh, made the arrangements for, oh, for the other. All right. But, all right. Well, cool. Let's talk about it. Uh, who would like to do a brief summary? I normally do them, but Georgia, if you want to, you're, you're more than welcome. Okay. Um, Slices of Life is it's a novella. It's actually a collection of short stories, each of which connects to the next. So it's basically my thought process when I was mapping it out was how many people do you cross paths with on any given day. Um, I used to work in an office. I used to be an administrative assistant. And so I'm thinking I've got the mailman. I've got all of the people I work with. I've got the UPS delivery person. Um, I've got the person I buy my lunch from. I mean, there's so many people that you cross paths with. And so my, my plan was to write a short story. So you get a little bit of snippet of somebody's life that day. And then you move on, you follow someone who came through their day. So if I'm the administrative assistant and I get a delivery from the UPS delivery person, then we follow the UPS delivery person and we get a snippet of her life. And then she delivers a package and then we follow the person that she delivered the package to. So I wanted to do that and make one big circle. Um, so you get a little bit there. There's 11 short stories. They are all very different people with very different lives and very different jobs. And um, it just, it was fun. It's like a little, it's a slice of everybody's life, really. Yeah, I thought it was very aptly titled. Thank you. All right, can I start first? Yes, please. This will be a nice little mix-up because normally Rev starts first. So, when I, you know, because this is my first Georgia Beers excursion, um, I got to say, <clears throat> right off the bat, I was like, Oh my God, this is like watching a British movie. Like one of those little like Love Actually or one of those other, you know, one of those other films where you meet a whole different collage of characters and how they all inter intertwine, you know, how they're all related to each other in some respects. Um, and I was like fascinated 
You know, I went from one story to the next. I was wondering, okay, who's going to link to who? Who's going to link to who? <laughs> and it was just a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. it was just, you know, it's like, oh, it's awesome because you get to see the little backstory of their lives. And it was nice because the way you set it up was, you know, you didn't, you didn't like belabor points about these people's, you know, like long past. I mean, you yeah. know, you, you gave a sprinkling like the freckles, you get a sprinkling <laughs> of where where they're at in their lives today, kind of like maybe what led them there. But it wasn't a long intro, and then where they're going or what they're you know where they're at right now in the space and time. And it was just fun. It was just fun. And I and as a matter of fact, when I got to the end, when I forget what the character's name was, <clears throat> she was confronting her soon to be ex girl. What? Wait, ha! her soon to be ex girlfriend. She. I was like, it's done? Oh, my God. No, it can't be over. Oh, my God. Because I did not want it to end. I didn't. I wanted it to keep going. I love that. I think that is the best compliment you can give a writer. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. Can I go now? Yes, you can go now. That was very good, Andy. Thank you. All right, then. And feel free to jump in on my on my time because, you know, I'm like that. I, I know. I, you still like I couldn't believe you're like, no, 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 like Archer. What the hell? Come on. Well, a, well you're a guy don't give nothing away. I was trying not to, but I wanted to make a point. All right. All right. Well, it did come It did come around nicely. Oh, well, good. And, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I liked it, too. And, and I found myself, you know, as soon as the next person was introduced, I, I already found myself starting to think of what their, what their thing was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really... I I have to say I I like the the stay at home mom one. She was my favorite too. <laughs> Red, you and I are like this, man. We're like this. I know. I'm telling you. And I I got I did I, the only note that I made uh, while reading this was I've never kissed any of my friends on the lips. Interesting. I don't be- and I tried to I tried to imagine myself with mm-hmm. um, any of my friends mm-hmm. and and kissing them on the lips and I just okay. I, I can't I don't think I I don't think I do that. We'll rectify that at GCLS when I see you. <laughs> oh, no, see that makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. <laughs> and I love you dearly. <laughs> I'll kiss TJ on the lips. How's that? If you if if she lets you, you have at it. <laughs> She's even less touchy feely than I am. <laughs> That's awesome. That's no, awesome. But I did. I did. You know, you did a. a I think you did a, a good job of um, of making each character very uh, very separate. You know, um, very very different from the others. Mm-hmm. Um, and and each one and, and the the things that you chose to focus on with each character I thought was really cool um, with whether it was um, dealing with family rejection or, um, or getting older or, uh, you know, being, being stood up and, and uh, you know, oh, and then, you know, the chef, that was very body image was, girl. I mean, they all had something poignant yep. about them. Yep. You know, it wasn't just a, a lighthearted little thing. Mm-hmm. They, each each one of these scenarios had something to say, and mm-hmm. that was that was really nice. And and I do have to say, I wish it was longer. Um, that's the only thing I hate about short stories is, mm-hmm. you know, we only. And I talked to a couple other people who had read this too, and they said the exact same thing. I wanted more from these from these uh, characters. Well, it's interesting because when I started out writing it, it was not intended to be a novella. Um, but I mapped it all out and I had, you know, the whole path and who was going where and who was connecting to who. And I finished it and it was short. And I thought, okay, well, that's all right. I can just go through and beef up each story. And I started to do that and it just didn't feel right. I liked them the way they were. And so I thought, all right, well, I'm just going to market it as a novella then um, because I didn't want to mess with it. You know, I liked it. I think it was just the right amount of each person. And frankly, you want to leave your readers wanting a little more. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. And there were, there. I mean, there were not all of them that, that would I really had wanted to see more, but there were a few, um, <clears throat> like the, the stay at home mom, mm-hmm. um, just because I would like to know, um, first of all, if she ever got through all those DVDs um, <laughs> and, then, and then secondly, how she went about resolving, 
uh, resolving this this major life altering, uh, you know, awareness. Um, yeah, that could be a that could be a, its own standalone novel, though. It, well, it I, could. I was going to ask you guys that, Andy. Which one would you pick if you had the choice to see more about one of those characters? You mean between Sarah or Rebecca? Any of no, no, no. Any of the stories and slices of life. If if you could take one of those chapters, one of those short stories, and see a novel on that character, which one would it have been? Sarah and Rebecca, or at least okay. Sarah. Yeah. Because I've asked, I, I try to ask everybody. Because my plan was actually, if I got enough um, focus on one of them, then I was thinking of making, of trying to make a full length novel out of them. Well, the thing of the how's thing, the voting going on that? Um, the chef is winning right now. Really. Well, oh. I would think that with the with the Sarah story, there's there's you know could be a lot of angst, you know. Well, Sarah's my favorite. I can always. I mean, who's going to know what the vote tally really comes out to be? Is that me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We count as two, and we can rack up some more. As a matter of fact, I think we just found our uh, our question for the giveaway. There you there go. You go. Oh. Excellent. I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Um, yeah, she's Sarah. I think was my favorite too when I was writing her. Mm-hmm. She, I don't, I don't know how. I haven't really looked to see how long her story is compared to everybody else's, but hers was a the most fun to write. B, I wrote it the fastest, and C, I wanted to stay with her instead of going on to the next one. <laughs> I, I understand that completely. Huh? You know, I mean, it's got all the elements in it. It's got, you know, housewife, kids, married, but, you know, she's she's feeling something that she's either hidden or that she's just coming into her own. And it's just it's just a great it's got a it's got a great base for a full model. Seriously. But at the same time, do you think that's been done too many times? I was just going to say well, that. Maybe. Yeah. But, you know, uh, from my very small intro into your work, I think you could probably pull off, uh, you know, a new and fresh approach. Maybe. maybe well, I don't know. I mean, because, I mean, you kind of and Andy, I, I'm not going to. You know, point this out that you haven't read this. So, but just to just to oh, read which it. you already did, which I did. But it, Damn it. it sucks. She hasn't read this one. But um, <laughs> thy neighbor's wife, you kind of, yep. you you kind of did it. Did do that, but but differently. And and yeah. um, but yeah, I, but I can see that that has been done before. But I really did like that character. She mm-hmm. there. She felt. Uh, she just felt good. Mm-hmm. You know, in my imagination. While we were watching DVDs in the den. Yeah, but, yeah, I get that, but it's kind of like how I started, you know. So I in the had, den with the DVDs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who didn't? Yeah, it's like I mean, I mean, yeah. There's a lot more backstory to me, and a lot of my friends know it. But you know, I just it kind of like wow rang true when I saw you know the DVDs. Mm-hmm. You know, so there you go. All right. So it's like a you know personal connection. Just saying. All right, I'm taking notes. All right, taking notes, sister. Uh-huh. <laughs> but really, I seriously though, I I really liked how you were able to to move from one character into another. It was so seamless, and also I really I can't remember the character's name. I'm so sorry, but it's the one that uh, owns the uh, wine store. Dorian. Dorian, that's it. And yep. and just you know how. You know, she's just her struggle to to make things go in this really crappy economy, and how she's so alone, and yet she can find that little spark in herself when uh-huh. when she meets that unexpected person uh, in a you know in a place that she frequents quite a bit, and it just I don't know, it just seems so so fabulous, you know. I just like oh, and then I want to hear more of their story together, how they you know link up and how that I goes. I like them too, very much. Yeah, I mean, that was just great because I mean, who doesn't like alcohol? Seriously, exactly. You know. <laughs> well, I think something else that we tend to fall into when we're writing um, lesbian fiction is everybody's always independently wealthy. There's always money. Nobody ever has money troubles. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I wanted to write somebody who, in this economy, was looking at not only losing her business but losing the business that. It has been in her family. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I tried to, I mean, with, with each of these characters, I tried to touch on something. I'm, I'm hoping that at least one of these characters can connect with every reader in some way. Mm-hmm. 
because of something that they're going through. You know, you've got Dorian struggling with the economy. You've got Liv, the pharmacist, who has horrible body image issues. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you've got the UPS driver who really just needs to find somebody. She'd be a wonderful girlfriend. She just hasn't found the right person. You've got somebody screwing around. You've got somebody who's the other woman. You've got somebody whose family's dying. I mean, so I try to put a little bit of, of common ground in there for everybody, and yep. I hope that worked. I think it did. Mm-hmm. I agree. Good. Yep. Good. Yep. But I, I could definitely see it. Sorry, I had to, I've been choking. No, I'm choking. <laughs> Thank God for that mute button. <laughs> I know. I love the mute button. Um, <laughs> But I, the, the chef was, you know, I mean, going back because I was choking and I couldn't talk about it. But um, that's why I, I got it worded edgewise. Huh? That's why I got it worded edgewise. <laughs> I'm going to start choking again. <laughs> I can definitely see why people would choose the chef. Uh huh. You know, she's getting older, and that that, that whole, uh, you know, taking care of your family. and Right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I just want to say that. I'm going to go choke some more now. You guys keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing, Rev. I was just playing, because, you know, I got nothing but love for you. But, yeah, I mean, this was a great, I think, personally, this was a great foray into your work. And I'm sorry that it's, it's taken me years to find you, or at least to read you. Well, you're being so nice about it, Andy, that it's okay. I'll forgive you. Well, thank you. And sex with Jennifer <laughs> twice. I'm just saying. Excellent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I just want to say, now, you, you did start another one, though. Yes. Yep. Yep. I'm working on, um, it's called Olive Oil and White Bread. That's, and that's the t- working title? That's, that is the title. Oh, the it's, title. Okay. I have had that title in my head for years. I just haven't known what to do with it yet. And okay. It, it, fits, it fits these people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can actually, I'll tell you where that came from. That is actually from my girlfriend, my soon to be my wife. Um, she is not Italian. I am half Italian. She is as white as they can be. She's a waspy. She's, you know, her family's from England. Um, and one day we were sitting outside in the summer and the mosquitoes just swarmed to me. They avoid her like the plague and they're all over me. And every summer we go through this. And I said to her one day, what is the deal? Why are they biting me and not you? And she said, well, if you had your choice, would you want olive oil or white bread? Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. <Yeah. laughs> That's awesome. So that is the story. And the characters are, this is actually what I'm calling a long-term romance. Because I get a lot of letters from, I don't want to say older lesbians, but lesbians who are in long-term relationships. And they say, when are you going to write about a long-term couple? You know, because we've all read the, you know, boy or girl meets girl, girl loses girl, girl gets girl back, they live happily ever after, and they're all 30. Yeah, so yeah. So we're starting out when these two people meet, and we're going to follow them for 25 years. Holy wow. crap. Yeah. I'm excited about it. It's moving along really well right now. I'm liking these characters very much. I, I have a path for them. I see where they're going. And, I mean, think about all of the things that we go through, all of the things that we deal with in our relationship as we spend years and years and years together. I've been with Bonnie for almost 19 years. Yeah, and you, uh, yeah. you know, my wife and I, we've been together. We just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, what is now? What's today? Yeah, two weeks ago, uh, 26 years. Awesome. So, Congratulations. That's thank wonderful. you. So, so you know that. I mean, you have job changes and you have, you move and you have family members you lose and you have pets you lose and you go on vacations and you have, I don't know, there's so many issues that we deal with that, you know, you have friends that break up. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we go through that doesn't get touched on in a classic romance because it's all about the falling in love part. Well, what happens after the falling in love part? How do you stay in love? See, now, I'd be curious to know, I mean, how do you, if you, I mean, obviously, I'll have to wait and read it, um, but, <laughs> I mean, that's, an, I, I mean, how do you, do you, like, jump ahead a lot of years and then just kind of recap? I mean, how, that, that seems like it would be logistically difficult. It's, it's proving to be interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually jumping, um, I'm not going year to year, but we're going chronologically, and we'll skip years here and there. Um, I don't think we need to see every single year, but, you know, we'll be in 1988 and then we'll be in 1989 and then maybe we'll go to 1993, that kind of thing. I'm trying to label it really clearly 
it's really imperative to keep track of things like music and movies and hairstyles and electronics. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's proving to be a fun to navigate. Um, but so far, so good. I'm excited about it. Hmm. Oh, well, I, I will definitely pick it up. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you ain't the only one. Hey, Andy, did you want to talk at all about 96 Hours? I, ju- <clears throat> I went from Slices of Life, Georgia, uh-huh. to 96 Hours, because I did like your writing style in Slices of Life. And I thought, oh, hey, let's let's check out something else. But uh-huh. I didn't get very far yet, because I, I only started today. Okay. Um, but so far, it's just it, it just harkens back, um, you know, what I was doing during 9-11 and, um, you know, when that happened. And, and it's just, so far, it's just, it's riveting. I mean, I actually was kind of sad that I had to stop reading to get ready for the show. Because I'm like, I want to read episode. But, yeah, so I, I can't wait to get through it. But, yeah, so far, so so good. I mean, if you, I mean, it sounds just kind of trite. But, enjoying it. Oh, my God. Woo! You're right. Mm, mm, mm. I, I bought that book right after it came out, and I just read it last week for the first time. A lot of people have said that to me. A lot of people either bought it and didn't read it right away, or they picked it up at the store, and they looked at the back, and they were like, mm, yeah, I can't. I just, I can't. Which I get. Yeah. I'm okay with that. It, it was, I think, um, for, I'm, I'm, hmm. so I just, I wasn't sure how how you would handle like the mm-hmm. politics of it and the controversy and things like that and and I think I I think I wrote this down somewhere I don't remember when, uh, talking about it this last week but I just I like your work so much that I was I was actually afraid that it would affect how I saw your work <laughs> I understand that and and I didn't so I mean I, I put it off and I put it off and then I figured okay you know what I want to read. I want to be able to read all of your work. I want to. When I sit down and talk with you, I want to be able to 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 have that under my belt. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and and it was it was so different than what I thought it was going to be. That and and just like Andy, you know, I, I took me right back to you know the minute I found out. I turned to my wife. I was laying in bed reading, and and I turned to her and I said, "Do you remember where we were? Because we had just." pulled into the parking lot at work uh, and we were working together and um <clears throat> and we just sat there and talked about it for a few minutes but okay. um I did cry a couple of times um and and I found myself really wondering if people like uh like the folks in that town really existed mm-hmm. and uh, they do. They do. I, I saw in your uh, in your uh in the acknowledgments I think uh, mm-hmm. Somewhere up there, you had talked about how you had seen the a special on that. Yes, the documentary. Yep, it was wonderful. And, and so that made me feel even better, knowing that 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 was true. That these that these could have been, you know, some of those those folks. Mm-hmm. Were you scared to write that? I was terrified to write it. I pitched it, and I half expected my publisher to go, mm, "Yeah, no, no, we're not going to do that." Um, but luckily they had enough faith in me to let me give it a shot. And then I, then, you know, the next feeling that comes is, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I thinking? Tying a romance around a tragedy. What? But once I got going, it took me a while. Once I got going, then it started to flow pretty well. And I, and I knew these people and I understood what was going on. And the more research I did, um, that helped a lot because I, I read, conversations and chat rooms of, I mean, these people are all still in contact with each other. The people from the plains who made friends with people in Gander, they all, there's chat rooms, there's forums. They all still have contact with each other. They all visit each other. It's amazing. They've, they've just created this bond with each other that they'll have forever. That's and awesome. once I got that, I was like, okay, this is going to work. This is going to work. Now, I don't want to get too much into it, um, <laughs> but I liked the way that you handled the continuing relationship between the two women. Good. And and, and I don't want to I don't want to say too much about that because I know Andy hasn't read it yet, and uh-huh. and and I know that there are other people who who may have may have it and have not read it yet um, for uh-huh. the for the same reasons that that me and a bunch of other people didn't. But uh-huh. I, I just want to say, <clears throat> if you have it, go ahead and read it because you'll 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 feel good about it. You'll feel good about it if you haven't picked it up yet um because you're not sure how you're going to re- react to it um go ahead i i tell you it'll be okay you'll enjoy it so there you go yeah. but yeah i like that it wasn't yeah. it wasn't clean cut that was the idea yep good i'm glad to hear that that's, yeah. that's a good summary all right then 
Are we done? I'm I'm very tactful. Andy, are we done? Are we done? Yeah, we're right. fifty five minutes in. How many? Fifty five. Excellent. Well let's talk about the well first of all, I'm sorry. Did did you have anything else you wanted to say, Andy? No, 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 I'm good. Okay. Georgia? Yes. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? I am just having a great time here. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> you were so the most fun. excited you were the most excited author guest we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> that's true I was like giddy all day we were doing some running around I'm like I gotta be home honey I gotta be home we gotta get home I gotta be ready <laughs> Wait, I hope it hasn't been a tremendous letdown for you <laughs> oh not at all I'm having a great time Excellent. okay so um, it, we're, we're almost done we have a few more things and then I'm gonna tell you guys about um, about the giveaways uh huh yeah this is plural Zzz. I love so that one you, are you ready to play? Well, yes, I think we're ready to play. Who would you fuck? Ooh, I love that title. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who should we pick? You know what, Georgia? You are yeah. the honored guest. So okay. of Slices of Life, who would you fuck? Oh, no. Well, don't forget, she has an additional assignment. I know she does, but let's talk about... Slices of life, who would you fuck? I think it would... Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with Sarah. I'm going to go with the stay-at-home mom. I'd like to... Um, Sarah you know, Holt. Yeah, I think I'd like to um, help her. Uh, <laughs> See the light? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're, you're such a I'm giving... Right, I know how to put words together. <laughs> You're very giving and generous. That's and, what I was and thinking. very considerate of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, you know, that was my choice. Damn it. <laughs> it was right also idea. my choice. Was it your choice too, Sherry? I have a backup, though. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So, since we're talking about Georgia at the moment, um, Georgia has an additional assignment because she and author Rachel Spangler mm. have a That's thing right. going on. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. Drink number three, folks. Drink oh number three. Oh, my God. Those two are like white on rice at the GCLS convention. I think they're very, very good friends. I'm just effing around. But seriously, I, you guys are butts from way back, right? Uh, yeah, it goes a little ways back. Yep. Yep. But yep. we don't live too far apart, so we're able to get together every now and then. Oh, sweet, sweet. So apparently Rachel was a little, uh, shall we say, concerned that you hadn't read any of her stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was hoping that that would turn around and that on this show you would be able to uh, tell our listeners that there was a book that you read of Rachel's and one of her characters you would fuck. Well, it's interesting because I had my choice, but I just started reading another of her books and I might have to edit my choice. I'm not sure. So my choice um, has always been Parker from um, Charles Murray. Really? Yes. Mm. yes. Let me guess, are you reading Spanish Heart now? I am not. That's my next one. I am reading Love Life right now. Whoa. Oh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I'm liking Elaine. I'm liking her. I'm are not you? Sure yet. I'm not sure yet because I'm not far enough in to make the switcheroo, but it's a, it's a possibility. Hmm. You'll, you'll switch again when you read Spanish Heart. Yeah, you probably well, will. Here's the thing. Rachel told me not to read Spanish Heart yet because I have a teenager here. Mm-hmm. Mickey? Uh, yes, that's been interesting for me. <laughs> Rachel said, well, you know, the main character in Spanish Heart is kind of like that, and oh. it might just piss you off. She oh. says, so you should wait and read that later. <laughs> She's probably right then. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I might put that one away for a little bit. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rev, who would you fuck? Um, <clears throat> my first choice would be uh, would be the stay at home mom, but since she obviously is going to be very busy, yeah, she's the um, winner. She's the clear ding 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 winner. Yeah, I'm going to pick the teacher. Really? She was my second choice, Rev. You and I are so tight. Wow, We're right there. Yes. Okay, now, Andy, I want you to I want you to mix your drink a little bit because um, I'm going to I'm going to pick. I want I want to hear who Georgia would pick um, outside of. If she could pick anybody from any of her other books. Oh, okay. Elena from starting from scratch. Huh? Elena from starting from scratch. There we go. Ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. She's <laughs> hot. Hands down. Yeah. And I know what she looks like in my head. 
<laughs> and she's, she, I like her in her suits. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She's and then out of her out. suits. <laughs> you two are scaring the shit out of me. I need more oh. drinks. What the hell? Yeah. And to go back to Rachel Spangler, Rachel actually, after she read Star Trek First Crash, she wrote to me and said, I think this is the hottest character you have ever written. <laughs> nice. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. Then, no contest. Sweet. Um, I forgot that I did want to talk just briefly about uh, the two-piece bikini. Okay. Um, first of all, the first thing that, that struck me about this, and, and there are a couple people on the forum who have, um, who have a theory. Actually, one person had a theory, and then somebody else said, oh, yeah, I like that theory. I'm going to steal that, too, um, <laughs> of why you use that point of view. Okay. Um, I found it really kind of distracting and it kept pulling me out of the story just because it's not something that I ever see. Um, okay. and, and, uh, and then I want to know why you did that. Also, um, the other thing that, that kind of made me sit back and go, holy shit, is that I've never seen any, anything that you've ever written like this before. Cause <laughs> it's, it's different in a, in a hot it is yes, very, it is. <laughs> they, got, they got hot in the hot tub. <laughs> so so um, the point of view. That's called second person point of view. It's not used very often, but I think it's really cool. Um, but I also think there isn't, aren't a lot of places where you can use it. Um, in my opinion, erotica is one of the better places for it. Um, so I really was just kind of playing when I wrote that. I'm like, I'm going to try to write it in this point of view and see how that feels. And I liked it. And so I just kept going and it worked for me. So there's no like hidden message there or anything. Cause I'll no. tell you what they thought. Tell me. They thought that perhaps somebody was having a fantasy. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. So when you think about it in that way, I can mm -hmm. see how that could go except for the whole, you know, I got dumped and whatever part, right. but I mean, the whole hot tub thing. I could see that. Absolutely. And of course, that plays out in my head as I'm doing it. So I guess you could say it's a bit of a fantasy. Um, but also the benefit of that point of view is that the person reading it can insert themselves right into the fantasy. I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're talk it's talking about you and you do this and you say this and you are, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I feel like it's a little, it makes it easier for the person to put themselves right into the story. But I, mean, not I feel like I was cheating on my wife. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 none of that. <laughs> Come on. But it might have been worth it. I don't know. No, 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 no. Don't make TJ odd. hunt you down like a dog. No, TJ would just take all my shit and my kid and, and leave. <laughs> I like TJ. <laughs> but anyway, so I just I don't want to I don't want to give too much about that away. But um, it was definitely a nice surprise at the end of, of Call of the Wild. <laughs> especially the, the other two stories were pretty tame and um and and that one was just like holy shit who wrote this wait a minute <laughs> yeah i don't write a lot of that but once in a while i, I once in a while i can i can pull it out <laughs> well you, you definitely pulled it out it was it was very nice <laughs> thank you very nice thank you. so okay are we ready to talk about the giveaways now almost i wanted to ask georgia one thing now, considering, keep in mind that I haven't read, a, you know, a, the body of your work, Georgia, and I, I sincerely apologize for that, and I will rectify that before GCLS. Hello. Um, but have you thought about working out of your comfort zone? Like, because um, I love the style of writing that I've read so far that you've done, but fantasy, sci-fi, western period piece, anything that's a little different than what you've done so far? Yes, I actually have, and I am pretty confident that I will get there. Um, I say this a lot. I don't read a lot of romance. I read suspense. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I would love to write that. And I, probably the more um, proper name for the genre that I would end up writing would probably be romantic intrigue because I like, mm. I like having a little bit of a romance in there, but... Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that I could pull off a mystery. I think that the mystery writers that we know, the Ellen Hearts of the world, are so brilliant that uh, I'm not sure. But I think I could do something along the lines of suspense. And I think a couple of the short stories that I've written and, and the novella that's in Outsiders, um, Balance, those are kind of um, departures for me. And I, I went 
in those directions with novellas and short stories because I'm playing a little and trying to see how it feels and could I pull off a full-length novel mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm hoping I'll get there at some point. It's, it's a matter of me growing a spine, I think. And like you said, moving out of my comfort zone and stepping over the lines that I'm so used to staying inside of and seeing how that feels. Mm. That, I think that would be interesting. I, I could see, you know, the way you write your characters, um, uh, they feel very real to me and, and um, like, people that I could actually meet. They, and, and as soon as you said, um, you know, that you would be interested in writing more, like, uh, intrigue or suspense, um, <clears throat> I, I would love to see something like that. It would be, um, you know, it, because you also have a good sense of humor. You have a great sense of humor, mm -hmm. and, and that comes mm -hmm. through definitely mm -hmm. in your work. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that, that you know, you, you, you should be able to, to have all of that, you know. So I'm sorry, I'm, my, my mind is already, you know, just bustling on along trying to figure out. <laughs> you know, well, that would be awesome. So I, I, hope that you, I hope that you do that. That would be great. Yeah, would be. I, down the road, I'll definitely try something. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you need any sounding boards, let us know. I may take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> we read a lot around here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Dang, seriously, we do. We read a lot. Oh, uh, well, this has been very enjoyable. I have had a blast. You guys are wonderful. Thank oh, you so thanks. much. Thanks. We think you're pretty tops, too, quite frankly. <laughs> so now we get to Rev, take it away. Okay, well, Georgia has um, has far surpassed any of the other uh, author guests that we've had as uh -huh. far as wanting to give stuff away to you guys. So um, she's going to be giving away five books. Five! Get five! Books. five. Um, one of the books is going to, um, to one of the, the callers uh, because... Um, because that's what we said we were going to do, and um, and I'll just put this out there. I, I was going to give a copy of uh, pick up a copy of uh, Justice and give it to the to the caller, um, but that just didn't seem like enough. So um, Georgia very very kindly agreed to put up um, a, a fifth book, and that one's going to go to Michelle, uh, who who Andy read off as Georgia Love because that's how I titled the <laughs> titled the clip. Oh, is that how it is? Okay. I see yeah, how you are. That's, that's okay. Um, that way I knew which one it was. Uh, so Michelle, much. congratulations. And um, I will, I will shoot you a, uh, an email um, for, or I'll shoot you a message on Facebook where we were contact, where you contacted me earlier. And, um, get your email address so I can pass it on to Georgia and you can let her know. She's giving away uh, the choice of Slices of Life, 96 Hours, or Starting from Scratch. Um, so nice. then we've got another four copies that we will give away to commenters on the website. Um, you guys know how this works. Go to the site, uh, go to the post for this particular show, and I need you to answer uh, a question. The question will be, which of the chapters in Slices of Life would you pick to see as a, uh, a full novel? If you haven't read Slices of Life, why not? Not exactly. What the hell? No, that's what you need to tell us. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know why I waited so long to read Georgia. I should have thrown some other authors on, you know, away. And, or, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, put you down the list. Read Georgia. What the hell? No, you know, read Georgia. Georgia goes to the top of the list. Apparently, I was remiss. That's all right. Well, that's been that's been corrected. Yes, it has. So, um, so listeners, you have until February eighth. Uh, when I wake up in the morning on February 9th, I'm picking the winners. If you're not there, I'm sorry, you yeah. missed out. That's right. Okay, so um, we got four books. So we better have at least four commenters. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> The Trust other thing me. that I wanted to say is that we really want to keep doing this phone call jazz. That's right. We like that. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Did you like that, Georgia, or did that make no, you uncomfortable? It, no, it was awesome. Well, you know, as long as I know that there isn't going to be anybody that goes, she is a giant whore. <laughs> hey, now come on. That could be a compliment in certain situations. Well, it could, but. <laughs> oh, I well, wish somebody had done that. That would have been hilarious. I'll do it next time. <laughs> I'll disguise my voice. <laughs> no, I thought the phone calls were great. 
Mm. Okay, cool. Well, th- there you go, listeners. The, the, the author likes that. So uh, give a call to 747-224-66. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't even know my own damn number. What the hell's the number? It's, it's 747-224-7763. Sweet. All right. So um, give a call. It goes right to the voicemail. So you don't have to worry that I'm going to pick up the phone and, and, you know, try and talk with you. Although she might fuck with you and do it. No. <laughs> any phones. Ever. Okay, never mind. So, All right. Um, there you go. Okay. All right, so February 8th, by February 8th, which one of the chapters of Slices of Life would you pick to see as a full-length novel? And if you haven't read Slices of Life, why the hell not? All right, get your answers in for your chance to win. That's right. All right, done. Sweet. Thank you, Rev. Um, before we go... Uh, Georgia, would you please uh, tell us how in the world you got roped into being the keynote speaker at GCLS in dis- I'm not, Dallas not this year? Sure. <laughs> I think they made a mistake. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> um, you know, they asked me, and I just, frankly, I was so flabbergasted and flattered that I, I don't even know that I answered right away, but... Yeah, they want me to be the keynote speaker. So I think that the theme is romance, which, okay, you know, uh, I, it should be an easy speech topic for me. But, sure. Oh, my God, I'm having a little trouble coming up with something that's, um, I don't know, like I have wide topics, but I want to kind of narrow things down. So I've never written a speech that, in my opinion, is this important. I mean, this is... I've been to the GCLS all nine years. This will be my ninth year. Wow. And I love this conference, and it's wonderful, and I I have met so many wonderful authors and readers and everything. I just, I'm I'm really, really excited, and I really want to want to do a good job. So I hope we have a huge crowd. Um, it's going to be awesome. It really, I've never been to Texas, so there you go. Nice. You've never been to Texas? I have never been to Texas. Can you believe it? Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> to me i'll have to look that up oh my god well if you're if you're interested i do have that video embedded in um the last episode on the website because that came up last time too what are you talking about <laughs> it's, well, gonna be, it's gonna be great i'm so excited i'll buy you an extra drink of your choice if you work in sprinkling of freckles <laughs> you know, speech? into your speech <laughs> you do it accept it Excellent. I'll bid on you as uh, in the author auction Even if you more. if you can put in your speech uh, cocktail hour. <laughs> and it can't be something like I'll see you all at cocktail hour. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and I can't say I'm going to have a cocktail an hour. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I don't know, that listen, <laughs> listen. Be 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 thankful that you didn't get roped into something like bearded clam and that that. Uh, Oh, lecture. See, I had that, a I, <laughs> this speech. I think that bearded clam is fantastic, I, and so we had a writing challenge, a short story writing mm-hmm. challenge, where the you had to work in cocktail hour and bearded clam oh into the story. So <laughs> <laughs> it was it was pretty fun. It was you pretty guys are crazy. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> We had okay. a thing. Any martini number three. <laughs> 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 but seriously, this has been a fabulous show. It has. I'm having so much fun. I'm bummed that we're done. Georgia, we're going to have to have you back, sister. Definitely. Oh, my God. We're going to have you back like Moody. Uh, I, well, I hope we don't have to wait until May of 2014. Oh, please. No, Come no, on now. Excellent. Well, good. Well, any parting words of wisdom or insight you would like to impart? I don't have words of wisdom or insight. Have you not been listening the whole show? (laughs) Hey, listen, I've been drinking. What the hell? (laughs) I'm lucky I remember my name. What are you thinking? (laughs) (laughs) It has been a blast. Thank you, Georgia, for coming on. Thank you for having me. I have had such a terrific time. This has been great. Fantastic. (laughs) Rev, thank you for coming on as well. You're welcome. I, I like it. It's fun. It is fun. I, and, I just can't imagine not doing this. And I didn't get, and I just want to point out, I was telling Georgia while you were, you know, away from the microphone uh-huh. for a few minutes. Okay. 
<laughs> that um, that a bunch of people thought that I would go all fangirl and stutter and stammer and just go, I love you, Georgia. You're so pretty. And and I didn't. So. Really? Okay, so can I tell a secret on air? Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Rev, are you good with this? Embarrass me. Are you good with it, Rev? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Georgia, I gotta say, one of the best moments of GCLS for me was when Sherry and TJ, which is TJ is Sherry's wife, when they both saw you come in the door for the first time ever into one of the panels. And I'm watching their faces. I mean, I, I briefly looked to see who they were gawking at. Seriously, their mouths, their jaws were down to their, you know, top of their breasts. Seriously. And I'm like, what are they looking at? I looked around and it was Georgia Beers. I'm like, I look back. And I'm like, oh my hell. They were like mesmerized. It was, it was freaking hilarious. I'm like, oh my God. And they're like, did I have lipstick on my teeth? No, no, no. And they were like, I think, you know, I, I've seen pictures of you and, and, you know, you, you, you look like this little short petite thing and then you just come like breezing in and it was like uh, one of those, those commercials where you're all backlit, you know? <laughs> she heard the heavenly choir stir. I did. And it was even more embarrassing because I was in a conversation with Catherine Friend talking to her about coming on the show and I mm-hmm. glance over. <laughs> oh, poor Catherine. It was like, I think she was oh. okay. Wait, wait. It was like, oh. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Well, I just want you guys to know that I will now be sleeping in my office because my head is too big to fit out the door right now. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure Bonnie will, will drop you down a bit. She might. Oh, that was <laughs> awesome. Happy to. That was awesome. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what long-term partners are for. It's like, bring that ego over here. Let me take care of that. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, so that was that was quite that was quite fun. So thank you for that bit of entertainment. I my day with that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's been talked about many times by our friends who are it, there. It really has been seriously. It's made the circuit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now you're in on it, so there you go. Well, wait till you see this year. Oh, you know what? There may be a little bit more surprise at GCLS this year than you realize. <laughs> I will leave it at that. Thank you, Georgia, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It's been awesome. Awesome yeah. sauce. It's been awesome sauce. Oh, oh I was wondering if you were going to work that in. Awesome sauce. <laughs> and we would love to have you back. I would love to come back. Awesome. Rev, thank you for coming on as usual. You're welcome. You are the bomb, sister. I love you. Yay. I love you too, sweetie. Yay. <laughs> All right. Yay for three, three martinis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you listeners for tuning in, and please, please, please sign up. Get your asses to GCLS. It's very important. We need the participation. And the conference is fabulous. Am I right, Rev? Am I right? <laughs> you are absolutely right, Andy. <laughs> Man, good. You know, I, I love you, little drunky. <laughs> oh, shut up. All right, so thank you very much. So long, everyone. Bye. Bye.